All right, good morning, everyone. Hope that you are doing well on this Thursday morning. We are uh, coming at you live from several different locations. Um, got all of us at our, at our houses, and we are going to be recording a live podcast for you guys today. But uh, obviously, you can see on the screen, I'm joined by Pastor Chad and Pastor Josh. How are you guys doing? What's up, everyone? Doing good. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Doing well. Looks like a beautiful day outside there, Josh. It's a little uh, a little crisp, a little chilly when the wind blows, but it's, uh, it is beautiful out. Yeah, gotcha. Chad, um, tell us about your view right now. I mean, it looks like you're, you got some sun and trees. Is anybody else out today? Is anybody, What's anybody that? outside? No, nobody, no, nobody's outside. No, no. <laughs> I, it looks like you have, like, you're in front of a window there, Chad. Like, you've got, like, yeah, some, I, a, a beautiful I, view. I am in front of a window. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's nobody in my backyard. Gotcha. That's good. I, I just, uh, I came outside because the, the quarantine uh, kiddos and everything is crazy mm-hmm. inside right now. So, yeah, they've kind of Quar- taken over the whole house. Quarantine kids. That's good. Mm. Be good. Uh, probably a kid show that comes it does out something to people during this. All right. Uh, yeah. So hopefully by now uh, you know how this goes. We are um, going to be recording an episode of the Highview Podcast. Uh, feel free to let us know that you're here. Leave some comments in this video. Um, obviously, we would love to interact with your thoughts as well. Um, and as you have hopefully seen by now, we're starting a new series on the podcast. Uh, where we are talking about the five solas of the Reformation. So uh, today we're going to be kind of keying in specifically on sola scriptura. Uh, so that being said, if you have any specific questions or anything, uh, any thoughts you would like to share, leave a comment. We'll be able to interact with those and hopefully uh, show some of those on the screen. And uh, after we record the episode, uh, we'll have a little time where we can uh, talk with, with you guys. So make sure to, uh, to drop a comment if you can all right uh you guys you guys ready to go let's do it yes sir cool all right so also for our facebook live viewers uh we're we're trying some new stuff today um so i I need your help i need you to let me know if you can hear (laughs) what's about to play right now we're going to be we're going to be doing the uh the face or the uh the podcast jingle as we start so let me know in the comments if you hear the sound that's about to play as I start the intro. So, you guys ready to go? Let's do it. All right, we're going to do this thing. Hello, and welcome to the High View Podcast, a gospel centered conversation exploring theology, culture, and life in the local church. I'm your host, Tyler Sweat, the pastor of Connection and Community at Highview Church. And today I am joined by uh, the one and only Chad Williams and Josh Hildebrandt. How's it going, guys? It's great. Well. Yeah, beautiful well. day outside. Sweet. Um, so it's a beautiful day. I have, is, I have a, a beautiful blue sky <laughs> above me. Chad has a beautiful tiled ceiling above him. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm also inside. Um, I, I've, I've tried to go outside to boost my spirits a little bit. You know, we uh, we've been cooped up inside so long, but now it's just it's it's weird because it's kind of cold. But uh, but yeah, I've loved I love being able to go outside during times like this because I I just get cooped up cooped up inside. Yeah, you need it for sure. I've I've been trying to go outside at least once a day for few hours and just kind of get some sunlight it's good for the uh good for the mental mental mm. health really is yeah for sure what other things uh have you guys been doing to just kind of try to keep a sense of normal i know we, we've talked a little bit about this whole pandemic and how we're responding but like what's been some some rhythms you guys have been trying to keep in like you know either going outside because you know we do need to be taking care of ourselves um spiritually and emotionally and physically and all that what are some things you guys have been doing to try to keep yourselves um kind of well-rounded yeah. during this time well that's a good question um it does feel kind of like survival you know it's uh but it's one of the things we've been doing is trying to keep a, a regular rhythm in the house of and it may be small but 
it's, that's kind of the, the stuff we can do right now with like dinner and um, some of the kids giving them regular activities. Hmm. Uh, Cause man, the days they kind of just bleed together and you're like, what day are we on? What day of the week is it? And yeah. so we've tried to, um, we have some scheduled things like Eli, he does Taekwondo virtually and Kaylee's got some virtual online classes that she does. And so just trying to keep a schedule uh, so it doesn't feel like there's just this unending period of time of just chill, like mm. with nothing to do, you know, but to give some structure in the day helps to uh, kind of uh, keep things a little organized, I think, and keep you from going too stir crazy. So that's for us, I guess. Gotcha. But still going stir crazy, <laughs> even with all of that. <laughs> what about you guys, Chad? What, what have y'all been trying to do to keep yourselves normal and all that yeah. good stuff. Um, well, I, I think it's, it's kind of weird. It's, it's um, in some ways we we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of new rhythms. Um, but, um, but something that I told you about, uh, I may have told Josh about this too, but some, a big step towards normalcy for me happened yesterday. Mm. Uh, yesterday was a huge step towards normalcy um i went through the starbucks drive through um, in Praise seven weeks and uh it was uh it was glorious it was glorious to see uh see everybody and to uh to drink starbucks again and it was like Great. you know what we're gonna be okay everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> we're, um, we're gonna we're gonna make it guys we're we're, we're gonna make it it's, it's gonna be all right Fantastic. Um, I'll tell you, one of the things I've been trying to do is be physically active. Um, I, Seven I weeks. Really try to to do some uh, some push ups, and uh, there's a group of guys who are doing a little push up challenge uh, that just ended yesterday. And I yesterday I had to do 50 push ups. What in the world? Oh, wow. I've never done 50 push ups in my life, and I probably never want to again. But. Uh, <laughs> But it's been uh, it's been good, yeah. Trying to keep some of those like, um, you know, trying not to eat everything in the house, uh, going out as much as I can, but being safe and uh, trying to keep a sense of normalcy. One of the things that I'm doing though to keep this uh, quarantine as normal as possible is still recording episodes of the High View Podcast, um, which I'm glad. Great to, segue. Glad to be here <laughs> with you guys. Uh, and today we a are segue. continuing. We are continuing. Um, a new series here on the podcast where we are unpacking the five solas of the Reformation. Um, and last week, if you didn't get a chance, go listen to that introduction podcast where we talked a little bit about historically where the, uh, the solas came from, why they were introduced by the Reformers, some of the questions they were looking to answer. And today, uh, we're going to start working through uh, some of these a little more specifically. So today, we're going to spend some time talking about uh, the uh, considerably, uh, you know, hopefully, I think we would say this, and we actually said this in the last episode, it's somewhat of the foundational uh, sola, if you want to look at one of these as being uh, the source of the other four, um, sola scriptura, uh, which basically means uh, scripture alone is how that's translated. Um, so let's start with just a simple kind of question. I know I just defined it. Um, or, or translated it rather, but what is what is the meaning of sola scriptura? Uh, let's just start kind of foundationally. What is what does that mean? Yeah, sola scriptura, um, scripture alone or alone scripture. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's um, it really is. I, we mentioned this last week on the podcast. We did an introduction to the uh, five solas uh, script. Sola Scriptura uh, is was really uh, the um, confessional dam that broke that that ushered in the the other four solas, and, and I think that that's probably the best way to think about it. It, it was the transformational moment, the 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 belief that changed how you viewed all the other essential beliefs, uh, because it changed the source. Those doctrines were emanating from, mm. from a from a from a, from a theological standpoint. So, uh, for most of medieval Christianity, uh, the Pope was considered to be the uh, infallible interpretational source 
uh, for all things doctrine. And once that started to be questioned, everything else was up for, for question as well. And and for what it's worth, the, the Catholic Church knew that. They saw Sola Scriptura as the, 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 the no turning back moment. It was going to be, uh, if they lost that high ground, all of the other, uh, there was no way to contain the Reformation if you uh, if you lost that. So um, I think that understanding that doctrine um, was for the common man and that doctrine was for everyone mm. uh, was was the key turning point in the Reformation and and ultimately led to led to the existence of Protestant Christianity, which you know uh, is uh, is is such a force in the world today. Uh, so, so I think it's really important to 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 see that connection to to borrow uh, William Tyndale. Uh, he, he famously said that um, scripture was even for the plowboy. Yeah. So this, this isn't for the elite. This isn't just for a select few. This is for anyone. And that's yeah. a foundational belief. Right. Yeah, I think that's uh, really well said. Um, a thought that, you know, I'd add to that one word that really comes to mind when I think of sola scriptura is the word sufficiency. And that's what Chad was basically getting at is that the, the Catholic mm -hmm. Church had basically said, look, um, scripture alone is not sufficient for your salvation, but you need these other things. And so the scripture, what it's what it states firmly is that all things that pertain basically to to your salvation, to godliness, the scriptures are sufficient to provide. Yeah. Um, and so it's scripture alone. We don't you know, we, we don't need a, a priest or and that's not to say that a teacher or a helper is not a good thing. But within the, the pages of Scripture, a man has everything he needs for life and godliness. Mm. Um, so uh, sufficiency is the word that really comes to mind when I think of Sola Scriptura. Right, that's good. Yeah, the, um, the primary kind of realm we're looking in is, yeah, what, what's the authority, the authority of the church? What tells us yeah, how we are to, to relate to God? Um, what, what is it that, that explains to us uh, what we are to practice as the church. And so uh, in that particular day, obviously, um, you know, and I think we're getting a little into the, into the second question um, of why this was an important theological distinction for the reformers um, was just that. I mean, they were trying to, to navigate uh, having yeah. a, uh, a certain description of the authority of the church uh, within the Catholic church that seemed to be unhelpful um, as far as uh, really what Chad was describing, this idea that then the, the common man kind of loses a grasp on how he can relate to God unless he has uh, some, some church or papal authority that's telling him what to do or uh, configuring the experience, I guess, as it were. And so what the reformers are really fighting for was this idea that, okay, hey, God has delivered to us uh, through prophets and through um, priests and kings and through all these men that he's used his word um, to reveal himself to his people, um, that he hasn't just revealed himself to, um, to a certain section that then they have to become this mediator. There, there is but one mediator, right? I mean, that's, that, we learned that in scripture, uh, that it is Jesus. And we'll get to Christ alone in, in a few more episodes. Um, but how do we learn about Jesus? We learn of, of him through the scriptures. So uh, what were some other reasons? Obviously, we just kind of talked about sufficiency of Scripture as well as the competition with the authority of the church. Um, what are some other reasons, if any, uh, that this was an important theological distinction for the Reformers? Well, I think that it, it's really important to, um, to, to look at the alone aspect and, and define what, mm. that, what that means. What it, what it doesn't mean <clears throat> is that uh, church leadership is unnecessary. That's good, what it yeah. doesn't mean is that church uh, government is unnecessary. They, mm -hmm. The reformers would have rejected that outright or, right. that, or that leadership as a whole is bad or something to be um, uh, looked at or despised necessarily. Uh, I think that's the other ditch is is when we we feel leadership abusing power, mm. we tend to go all oh, leadership is bad. 
And the problem is bad leadership is bad. That's the issue. And what you see in the Protestant Reformation and, and Sola Scriptura, when you say Scripture alone, what they're saying is Scripture alone is ultimately authoritative mm -hmm. in that it is the ultimate highest authority. Right. And, and instead of church leadership, it's that actually Scripture holds church leadership accountable as opposed to church leadership being able to kind of use scripture for their own purposes. Who's ultimately in control? Who's ultimately making decisions? Who's ultimately shaping uh, beliefs and, 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 and the like? So understanding that is really, is really important because the, the reformers were not, uh, were, were not saying leadership is, is bad. They were saying that leadership in the church is not ultimate. Yeah. And, and those are, two different things and so when, when you know what's interesting is is a lot of people point to <clears throat> uh martin luther famously you know we talked about last week famously nailing the 95 theses to the to the uh castle door there in wittenberg um as kind of the starting point for the reformation but if you actually uh if you read some of uh luther's um biographical notes on kind of how he, his heart was evolving on this um Really, the beginning of the Reformation in, for Luther would go back further. He actually uh, had, a, had, a, had an epiphany of sorts when he questioned the church leadership's decision to execute a man named John Huss. And, and he was really disturbed by that. And he knew it was wrong, and he also questioned... Uh, for the really, I guess, first time I said, clearly church authority, church leadership is not infallible. Yeah. Uh, he had such an issue with that. And so that then planted seeds of that can't be the highest authority yeah. um, and because it got it wrong is the point. Right. And yeah. so there must be, must be something greater than that. And, and so the, the seeds of who's really in control, we're already there. And, and that's why I say this doctrine, or this, I'm sorry, this particular belief that, that Scripture alone is authoritative leads to all the others. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I think of the, you know, the distinction between, um, you know, when we say the Scriptures are sufficient, we are not saying that, you know, any man's interpretation of the Scripture is sufficient. That's where the um, you know, Catholic Church, uh, that's where they planted their flag, is they said, look, we will interpret what these scriptures mean to you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's the, the kind of the challenging part is we, we need an objective truth. Um, but we're broken, fallible people. And, you know, we can take God's word, which is um, inerrant, without error, sufficient, and we can we can bring out of that a, a translation that's uh, you know and a meaning that's that's not those things, mm. and so um, it's not it's not good to put a broken man in between the stream of that objective truth and then say mm. that's where it ends. Now you got to take it all the way back, and and sometimes there will be mis you know uh, rep mis uh, translations or misunderstandings with the scripture. I think that happens, you know. I think of the Bereans who uh, were commended because they went back to the scriptures to see if these things were true, you know? And so we encourage people to, uh, to, to seek out, um, you know, people that are faithful in teaching God's word. But then at the same time, you should always be checking those things back at the source, which is God's mm -hmm. word itself. Um, and, I, and I think that's yeah. just a good process. And we need to be doing that with our own thoughts, like yeah. my own mind. Yeah. You know, because I, I kind of set myself up sometimes as my interpretation of Scripture maybe being the sufficient part. That's not the truth. Mm -hmm. It's it's Scripture is sufficient. And, and, and as much as my interpretation is an honest representation and is as accurate, then, you know, then it's sufficient. But um, but we constantly need to be checking that, you know, going back to the source. I think that's so important. Right. Yeah. But when when we talk about this, I mean, it's important to know that. The Reformation, um, specifically, and 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 Sola Scriptura being this like linchpin, um, the basis for that. You know, you had these guys, um, even late 15th century guys, um, like Zwingli, uh, 
some of some of the the earlier reformers mm. who who are who have the audacity to say, "Hey, where is that in the scripture? Mm. Where where is where is that? Where are these rights, so so to speak? Where 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 are these like what you know these particular uh, practices and 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 the like? Where are they? Yeah, and they had the audacity. To, to ask, where, where is that in the scripture? And that's such a that's such a a, a godly question to ask. It, it's 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 mm-hmm. uh, it's not being disrespectful, in my opinion. It's not necessarily being disrespectful of, of leadership. Um, it's it's actually um, serving leadership by sharpening leadership uh, mm-hmm. when we ask those kind of questions. And so I, I think you know having it, it, it kind of starts with the audacity to say. Where is that? Where is that in the Bible? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Is that right? It's kind of um, it's like saying, you know, what Chad mentioned earlier, church leadership isn't the problem. Unbiblical church leadership is. Um, tradi- church traditions aren't the problem. It's unbiblical church traditions uh, that are. And so uh, this is where we kind of nail down and say, okay, then as as Josh said, we have to figure out where our authority starts. Um, where are, uh, does it start with our interpretation of, of the scriptures or does it start with the scriptures speaking to, to us? And unfortunately, I think we lost, lost Josh, but let's keep going. So let's, let's kind of carry this into today. Um, so we've talked about what was, what some of the reasons why uh, it was imp- an important theological distinction for the reformers. Um, so why is Sola Scriptura, and we've kind of already hit on some of these things, uh, why is it still an important doctrinal distinction for us today? Uh, I think there are still some of the similar issues uh, that the Reformers dealt with because they were humans dealing with human entities. Um, we, we need to figure out how uh, this truth translates into our situation as, as Christians in church today. So uh, let's, let's talk about that for a little bit while I try to get Josh back back in here yeah um well it it is the uh the the north star uh still for 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 protestant christians around the world uh it is the the defining difference in how we see the christian faith it is ultimately authority uh it based it's it's mm-hmm. who has the final faith yeah. And can we know the scripture for ourselves? And so I, I think that um, that particular uh, point is still that's still what makes it who we are. Uh, and so this is you know this is shared um, uh, among all uh, Protestant dom- denominations. Like we're, we're this is a uniting point for all of us. Um, mm. it, this issue. And I think, like specifically, uh, it, it, it'll change the way we think about preaching, um, you know, in the local church. So, um, if if I believe that Scripture is ultimately authoritative, and not my interpretation of Scripture or what I say, uh, you know, that it's, it's not found in Scripture or supported by Scripture, is authoritative, then it's going to change the way I handle the Bible. It's going to change the way I preach. It's going to change. Uh, it, it Sundays becomes like it's not about um, come to hear what Chad has to say. It's mm-hmm. come to hear the Bible, and and so um, some of the practices that looks like you know sticking to the text, preaching through books of the Bible, uh, things like expository preaching, all of that um, is meant to support and reinforce soul scripture. Really, it, it's meant to show that like apart from this. Like you can come for tips and and life hmm. points and all this other stuff, but 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 really truly, um, yeah. There's Amen. nothing that we have to say that that matters apart from what's in mm-hmm. the authoritative of God. Like that's it. That's all we have to say. And, and so it, it 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 still radically reverberates. Mm-hmm. You can see. Like you can watch how a church handles the word. I think you can watch how they mm-hmm. handle the word. Um, and see like how close their ties are and commitment is to solo scriptura uh, in some ways. Um, doesn't mean if you don't preach like me, you don't believe the Bible is authoritative, but it means that it will come out in the culture of that church. 
it will be seen over time mm-hmm. who's really God's hand. When you come to a passage or a passage that will offend us culturally, how do you still speak that authority? Do it wisely and wisely. Like, are you still willing to say it? Mm-hmm. That's where, like, who's who's authoritative? Uh, do I get to edit this, or do I have to? Do I have to actually like say what this is? And uh, so there's lots of ways that it's still uh, our our commitment to it can't be hidden. Really, it's yeah. going to come out. Amen. Amen. Well, I missed a, a, a good little bit there. Uh, sorry about that. Michael put in the comments something about the sun behind me looking really cool. Well, that sun heated up my iPhone, so it shut down due to over, you know how if your iPhone gets too hot, it'll shut yeah. down saying, hey, your iPhone's too hot. So I was like, oh my goodness. And I was, try, I was trying to fix it. I didn't know if y'all could still see me as I was like trying to turn it off. But, um, but anyway, um, I got it sorted. Was- yeah, I, th- I think... Um, now go ahead, Tyler. No, I was going to re- reiterate the question for you in case you missed it. So why is soul scripture an important doctrinal distinction for us today? Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, um, just one of the things that came to my mind, and, and I may repeat some stuff Chad said because I didn't hear his answer fully, but um, being a young pastor starting out in ministry, um, if I didn't have soul of scripture, uh, the only thing I would have to, to really pastor people would kind of be um, – how can I say it? Maybe um, my my ego and um, maybe my charisma. Mm-hmm. And that's that's not enough. You know, um, what's needed um, to to really uh, pastor people and to, to lead a congregation is something beyond any type of authority I have. You know, when I'm a young 20 year old guy and I need to have a difficult conversation with someone, where am I going to pull you know, the authority to, mm-hmm. to say, this is what you should do, or you shouldn't do this. Yeah. It's, it's not coming from my life experience. It's not, you know, it's, it's got to come from a source that's greater than that. Something that's, mm-hmm. um, that's stronger than that. And, um, you know, I think, um, for me, that's one of the most refreshing, um, realities of pastoring is knowing that there's an authority that we're all looking to that goes beyond us that we all have to answer to. It doesn't matter our age. It doesn't matter our experience. Like this is God's word. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I think that that uh, plays itself out in a local church. You can really see churches that lean on, on you know, uh, Sola Scriptura with how they um, counsel people, with how they uh, shepherd and pastor and correct and train their, their members. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I think it just gives a lot of strength um, to a church body to, to rest on that. Because if not, what you end up having is a, a church that um, that the authority structure is based on whoever is the most charismatic, whoever kind of can control a crowd the best. And then you, you end up with a lot of authority abuses and, and a lot of hurt people. Um, you know, the authority of Scripture is an authority that will never abuse right when it's when it's handled properly Mm. when a shepherd takes the authority of scripture and he applies that to the life of the sheep they're they're helped from that right that's the streams of living water that they're brought to that's the rod of correction Mm. but but when i use my own authority uh that can be abusive sometimes you know when i'm operating just strictly in that and so um yeah I, i think there's so many benefits from just leaning again back into the authority of scripture I think about how Hebrews talks about how the discipline of the Lord is a good thing and how a father disciplines his child. And, and, you know, you think of that word authority of scripture, like, and, you know, as a father in my house, I kind of have this authoritative, you know, position and I expect what I say to be followed. And, but also there's goodness and there's a gentleness that comes with that authority. There's a protecting aspect to it. Um, and so I, I think the sufficiency of scripture provides those things, you know, for a church, uh, and, and for you know a Christian community. That's good. So let's uh, let's kind of wrap the the conversation up here. As we've talked about why it's important for us today, uh, how do we? And we talked a little bit about this on the church level. How we practically implement sola scriptura as a church. Um, we see it as our authority in preaching. We see it as uh, our authority in leadership. Um, but how about as individual believers? What are some ways that the individual believer can anchor their Christianity, if you will, 
on the truth or the conviction of sola scriptura? Um, you have to read it. Yeah. Um, and I'm not yeah. being part of it. You, mm -hmm. I, I think that um, there, the, there has to be. Um, you have to to know what you're 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 handling a, a, a sharp two-edged sword mm -hmm. that no joke. And so when you see a when you see a a, a, a bumper sticker. It says, you know, the Bible says it, that's, I believe it, that settles it, you know, whatever. Um, you know, you, you can kind of, you can kind of feel where there's this, it's almost like, you know, with my daughter, when, when my daughter now, my, my daughter's at the age now where she questions my, my judgment, my, I, hey, don't stand on that. Mm. Why? Um, yeah. The, the, the like, lazy universal answer to that is because i said so mm. right yeah. takes, that's a good answer too it, 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 i use it all the time but it, <laughs> but, but it's also um it's also insufficient for leading a church uh, because i said so where, where does it say that like where where what, why do you say that it, it's not it's not merely your authority that gives you the right and that that's that's where in church history things have always gone awry. But yeah. people go, well, because I said so. Well, where's that right in the Bible? Well, I'll just do it because I said so. Mm. And, and so, what's harder? The harder work to do is to to let, to know the word as a pastor and to know the word as a as an individual enough mm. to to be able to wrestle with the text and see what it says. That's that's harder to. It, it's it's easier to say, well, because I said so. Rather than well, let me show you why I'm saying this, yeah. and, and do hard work of that. Yeah. And I, and I think that if we're going to, as Christians, be able to to live committed to sola scriptura, we got to know what we're handling. We got to know what we're submitting to. We got to know what it says. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And so there's no way around that. You can't submit to a Bible you don't know. Because you don't know whether you're submitting or not. Yeah, amen. And, amen. and, and so the reformers were really, uh, really intentional about pointing out that, hey, this is, we're not saying all of scripture is easy to understand. We're, mm. we're, we're, we're not saying, yeah. we're saying that all scripture is authoritative. And, and those are not the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Hey, amen. I think that's the, the linchpin point there is. If you want to say you believe that scripture is sufficient and scripture alone, well, you better be reading it. And then I would just push down a little bit. We're actually going through a study called Habits of Grace right now by David Mathis. And we're going to be doing that study right when we get off this call. But um, I just read this morning the section on scripture memory, the chapter, and, mm. and um, we've been talking about meditation. And, yeah. and I will say that, you know, in addition to reading it, then comes the hard work of understanding what you're reading. And Chad was, was getting at that, you know, it's. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. you know, because there's, man, there's a lot of people that put coffee cup kind of verses on mugs and they use it as authoritative or, but, but they've missed the meaning. Mm -hmm. And so it, it has no authority. It only has authority in as much as you're applying the right meaning to it. You know, yeah. so I would say, um, meditate on God's word, um, and pr pray over God's word so that you would understand what it means. Um, memorize God's word, you know, think of verses like 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for correction and training, uh, training uh, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped. Um, and Colossians 3.16, so let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. Um, you know, I think uh, when we make the statement that, you know, scripture is sufficient, um, well, then does our life back that statement up by how we treat mm -hmm. scripture? Those are some questions, you know, we need to ask. Yeah, that's so good. And, and I'm glad you brought that verse up because that's what I, I was going to kind of close us out on. Second uh, Timothy three sixteen. 16, um, he mm -hmm. tells the young minister, Hey, listen, all scripture is breathed out, inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, rebuking for correction and for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be completely equipped for every good work. And the thing I, I try to remember about that verse is that not all of those things are comfortable. If we uh, seek out those, those teachers that kind of speak to our itching ears, we might look for 
uh, words that are always encouraging or always affirming or always uplifting. Um, but actually, right. Scripture is a sword that, that divides down into, mm. even down into the attentions of our heart. And so it not only teaches us and, and encourages us, but it also rebukes us and corrects us. Um, it, it works uh, for us and uh, against us sometimes. And so I think that's where we need to begin um, lifting high God's word as not just coming to it and saying, um, what do I think this says? Or what do I think this means for me? Uh, we have to be very careful when we approach the Bible that way. And, and what do I get out of this? Um, because we, we will tend to avoid the more uncomfortable parts and just say, oh, well, this yeah. good part applies. Or this good part means this to me. Um, we have to yeah. let, kind of let it read us, you know, as it's been said. Um, we have to allow it to teach us, to, to change us. Because that's that's the intention of scripture, uh, to be that authoritative right. word over us. Right. So many times when uh, me and Eli are hanging out and playing, he'll he'll want to show me something, or we'll be working on, you know, whatever it may be, one of his taekwondo karate kicks or something. And hey, mm. Dad, watch this. And so he he comes to me, mm. and he wants to show me, and he kind of wants to find affirmation in what yeah. he's doing. And and of course, I give him affirmation a lot. Mm-hmm. But but a lot of times there needs to be something corrective that yeah. that I correct like in a loving way and sometimes I have to literally like stop him and say like change his mindset of, of why he's coming to me so that he'll understand mm-hmm. that there's some stuff he needs to learn and I think sometimes I approach God's word like Eli approaches me just unaware of how much I don't know mm-hmm. unaware of how much I need to be changed yeah like so w- when, when we approach God's word we need to see it as like not a book that has some good suggestions that will help a guy that's pretty already all right. We need to see it as like white hot truth and then a person that's just muddling through life, right? And and when I approach God's word, it is there to change me. Like and and that's what it intends to do um for the better. And so I think that humble disposition, you know, coming before the word saying like this is these are not suggestions, these are not things that are going to improve my already okay life. Like this is a word that that cuts deep. And you were talking about that, Tyler, like dividing, you know, um, like Hebrews talks about joint and marrow, discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's it's a posture of heart that I think we need to have before the word of a humble disposition of, you know, I'm here to be changed. Right. Good deal. Um, Well, that's uh, hopefully a helpful um, understanding, unpacking of this idea of sola scriptura. I know that um, we we tend to uh, forget how important scripture is for us. And so let's kind of let's focus on reclaiming that idea that scripture alone is still our authority today. And hopefully you are a part of a church uh, as Highview aims and hopes to be a, a church that is gospel-centered and word-saturated. Um, we, we talk a lot about why we uphold the authority of Scripture, that we believe it is, uh, it's the only rule for us as believers, but also as a church. So uh, hopefully you are placing yourself in a church that sees Scripture as the authority um, and not any one leader or uh, any one organization. It is God's Word alone. Uh, So again, we hope this has been a beneficial conversation for you. If you're listening to us now on the podcast version of this episode, go ahead and share this. Give us a nice rating and review. And uh, always be aware that we have uh, started recording these live on Facebook. Uh, So be looking out for those notifications if you would like to jump in live and leave comments and interact with us. We'd love for you to jump on with us there as well. Um, But again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next time. Cool. So that was the episode. That was the podcast episode. Um, and uh, Josh already mentioned Michael's uh, comment that you just look glorious <laughs> with the sun <laughs> behind you. That's, that sun heated my phone up, man. I didn't realize it. It just <laughs> heated it up and put it in critical condition and it just shut down. Yeah. I um, just want to give a few minutes for anybody that's watching live with us right now. Uh, I know we just talked a lot about Soul Scriptura. Um, if you have any questions or any thing to input um leave us a comment we can show it on the screen Um, yeah this is uh this has been fun guys i I really enjoy doing these live live shows yeah they have a nice little element to them 
you know, we tried to keep uh, our podcasts that weren't live kind of like a live feel. I mean, we never really did any editing or cutting much with those. It was yeah. as as it was is what you got, and which I kind of like that feel, mm. comfortable vibe. That's good. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, we we uh, need to uh, do some more guests on the podcast. You know, the only time we've had guests are usually when I've not been able to. Like, I missed the podcast with Rob Carter, which I'm yeah, still sad about. That was good. Thanks again, Rob. Need to do <laughs> some more. <laughs> you see this. Um, that, was, that was a good podcast. We're actually about to record another podcast. It's called the the High View uh, Stashcast. Um, no, Daryl mentioned. Oh yeah. Said I'm just thankful that the mustache is dead. <laughs> Death to the creeper stash. <laughs> Daryl, in three days, <gasps> it may be dead now. But it's, <laughs> the stash will rise. It only it will only dead. take three days for it to come back. Mm. I love. I love that Daryl is a recurring character on all of our... He only comes to talk about my mustache. That's the only reason Daryl mm. comes back to this podcast. I don't even think he watches... And to the, ask the, really the easy show. theology questions, like resolving yeah. the sovereignty of God and the, and the free will of man. Piece of cake. That's... <laughs> um, yeah, also, I'm really enjoying this, uh, this new little service we're using today, because you guys might not be able to hear it, but I can play little sound effects, and I wish I had throughout the episode. I can do like an applause... <laughs> Oh, you should, yeah. Little, we also little DJ Horn. Anytime yep. somebody like makes a powerful point, I'm just gonna play this. Did you did you play any sound effects? No, uh, I no have. you should have, man. Um, you should have given some claps. Mm-hmm. In the next, we also the, haven't done a hot take in a while. I was about to say, and <laughs> hopefully in the next episode, I can load up the the high view hot take jingle, and we can uh, can get back to that. My favorite jingle of all time. Mm, it's good stuff. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, very cool. Hey, uh, thanks again, everybody that joined us uh, on this live episode of the Hive Podcast. We're going to try to do these uh, re- more regularly, um, even when we get back to being able to be together. Hopefully, we can keep a live element because uh, it's just fun to me. And again, I love when, when anybody can uh, jump on and leave a comment and um, let us know, you know, if you're enjoying these episodes, share them when we post the, the podcast, share this video so others can watch and uh, just glean from our incredible wisdom and uh, <laughs> biblical acumen. It's uh, it's quite impressive. These guys are, uh, they make me look good as, yeah. a, as a podcast host. So um, anyway, thanks again for joining us and uh, we'll, we'll see y'all later. <laughs>